What's up guys, Pensumshwari505 here. Today, I did something very unusual, and I bought something brand new. This is a Menards Union Pacific starter set, and we're gonna take a look at it right here, right now. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. This should be a good video. <laughs> All right, so looking at the box here, there's a lot of going on here. You got a picture of the set here. You got a window to see the engine, picture of the remote and all that. And yeah, I think they did pretty a pretty decent job on the box art. And it says up here that it is compatible with all O-Gage track, including Lionel, MTH, and K-Line, which is kind of nice. Now, I do think it's kind of funny that they mentioned K-Line even though K-Line went out of business in the early 2000s, um, they got out a bit into a bit of legal trouble with Lionel, and then Lionel bought them out, and yeah, they're, they're no longer around. But yeah, so they got all your box art and whatnot, and then they actually put all the instructions on how to get this set set up and running on the back of the box, which I think is quite interesting. Usually they'll have like a, usually, um, manufacturers that make starter sets like Lionel and MTH will have a booklet uh, packed inside in the box. But Menards did this differently to cut corners and save costs, and they put it all in the box, which honestly, I don't think is too bad. So yeah, I think they did a good job with this box. All right, let's get this unboxed. So I already cut the tape on the back of the box. Just lift that out. As you can see, there's a piece of foam covering everything, so we're gonna have to get this out of the way. Inside, there's a piece of paper talking about getting a email and whatnot about new stuff. I'm not gonna need this. And yeah, as you can see, they packed everything pretty nicely in here. You got your engine, your caboose, your track, and your remote, and I think I see the uh, power pack hidden behind the remote. So yeah, overall, I think they boxed this pretty nice. Um, yeah, I'm going to get this all set up now. I'm just going to do the train and the remote and whatnot. I'm not going to do the track as I already got a layout. So yeah, let's get this all set up. All right, I got everything set up. As you saw at the end of the time lapse, I do have some extra freight cars, but we're not going to focus on those. We're just going to focus on the train. So, without further ado, let's take a closer look at everything. All right, so let's start off with looking at the engine. And just before we start, a little disclaimer this is a situation where you get what you pay for. It's cheap because it's built cheap. But with that said, this is still decent for what it is. So anyway, let's start off by taking a closer look at everything. Starting off with the front pilot area, you have a operating knuckle coupler. Um, now it is a manual coupler, it's not an electro coupler like what you see on MTH or Lionel, but it's still nice that it's at least operating. Um, what you also get is on the front end of the engine here, you got this nice Union Pacific uh, logo. Now, again, uh, you can kind of see the not the cheap build quality. Um, there's no opening door. The uh, paint is a little scuffed, and there are some imperfections in the decal. But, I mean, at a distance and when it's running, you're not going to see it. Um, also, on the top of the nose, it's painted gray. Um, you got lighted number boards and an operational headlight. <clears throat> and this is directional, so when uh, the train is going forward, this lights up. And when it's in reverse, uh, this is off. Um, you have two crew figures in the cab. And you also have uh, plastic chrome horns on the top. Going over to the side of the engine, you have red striping on the top and bottom of the engine. 
you got your big Union Pacific name. There's also the road number, again, in the same font as the Union Pacific name. Um, they added a flag, which is more seen on modern Union Pacific engines, but I still think it looks quite nice. Um, they painted all the vents on the side silver. You have die-cast metal trucks and uh, with uh, applied separately applied uh, ladders. Uh, the handrails and doors on the body are all molded into the plastic, which, again, you're not really going to see opening doors and stuff on a cheap model like this. Um, and if you look real closely, there are some paint imperfections uh, right here here, uh, here, and there. But again, you're not really going to see that unless you're looking like really, really closely at it. And But I still think it's a nice model overall. Looking at the rear of the engine, there is not a whole lot going on back here. But what you do have is a, an operating knuckle coupler, just like the front of the engine. You also have a light in the porthole for the door that turns on when the engine is in reverse. And you also have a molded in door. Now, my one problem with the rear of the engine is that they kind of messed up the, uh, the diaphragm and vestibule area. Um, there is, of course, no diaphragm around the door. And the door should be more inset to the body. It shouldn't be sticking out like this. Also, they wouldn't have the reverse light in the porthole for the door, but I mean, I still think overall this is not bad. Um, I just think there there could be some minor tweaks made to this. Looking at the top of the locomotive, there's not a whole lot going on. Um, you have kind of a fake war bonnet paint scheme going on around here. Um, you got four molded in fans and two exhaust stacks that are not operational. But if you look closely, there are some holes down in the exhaust stacks. My guess on why those are there is that they considered doing a smoke unit at some point, but they ultimately decided not to, to keep costs down. Now, again, that's just a theory. I don't know how true that is. But uh, other than that, you have some more molded in details on the back there, and there's some molded in rivet de details along the sides there too, which I think looks pretty nice. All right, now that we've taken a look at the engine, let's take a look at the caboose. All right, we're going to first start off with the side this time. Um, so as you can see, painted all yellow, you got your Union Pacific name, uh, there's your uh, unique caboose number on the side there. You got uh, Union Pacific Building America with the flag. Again, this is a more modern inspired paint scheme, but still looks all right. You got frosted windows. There is a lighted interior. Um, you got uh, molded in handrails that are painted red. And for some reason, they decided to put the marker lights near the front of the caboose, which I think is a strange. Uh, strange choice. But uh, other than that, yeah, it's a pretty nice model. Um, I do think this, uh, this step design is quite odd. Um, I don't really think it's modeled off of anything real, but I mean, overall, it's not a bad caboose. All right, moving over to the end of the caboose, we have flashing red lights at the end there. There's a separately applied uh, brake wheel. You also have operating couplers on both ends. And there is also a ladder going up to the roof. And as you can see, there's another paint imperfection there. But again, you're only going to see that if you're looking really close at the caboose. Looking at the top of the caboose, there's not a whole lot going on. It's mostly painted gray with a black walkway along the roof. Um, you have a black plastic uh, smokestack that is separately applied, along with a radio antenna on the top there. Now before we move on, I want to take a quick look at the trucks on this caboose. Uh, these trucks are actually very unusual for Menards. These are actually very 
very nice trucks. Um, if you look closely at the roller bearing caps, those actually spin as the car rolls down the track. There's also a working suspension system, as you can see. And these are die cast metal. These aren't plastic like your regular uh, Menards trucks, which I think is really nice. And I kind of wish they would do, do that more uh, for their freight cars. All right, before we get to running the engine, I want to quickly talk about the remote. Um, overall, it's not a bad remote. It's not the best feeling remote ever, but it's not bad. It's made of this lightweight uh, plastic material. Um, and yeah, feels okay in the hands. It's not overly big, but it's not super small either. Um, you have your on off switch there. You got the volume control there, which I think is really nice that they do it on the, uh, on the remote rather than on the engine. Because say, for example, you're running your train, right? And you have someone with you and they say, oh, it's a little too loud. You don't want to have to stop the engine, take it off the layout, whatnot to adjust the volume. You can just do it on the remote there. Um, you have the speed dial here, which goes pretty far in both directions. Now, there is a dead zone on the remotes. Um, the engine doesn't start moving to right about there. Um, you also have your red LED light to tell you that this remote is connected to your engine. You have three buttons. You have a button for the horn. Uh, crew talk and the bell. Now these aren't the best feeling buttons out there, but I mean You're not really going for overall feel I guess when you're trying to make something cheap and affordable for everybody um, You also have the road number uh, printed on there. You also have the a picture of the engine uh, put on there um, on the back, there is a sticker of Jack the German Shepherd on your uh, battery cover, and you have to use a Phillips head screwdriver to take the battery cover off. Now, this remote takes three AAA batteries, and speaking of batteries, whenever you get this, make sure you put fresh batteries into the remote, because if you don't, um, connection is going to not be the best um you can start it up right and it'll keep going and then say you want to stop it or use the horn or anything like that it won't do anything that red light will start flashing then so always make sure you have fresh batteries in your remote or else it's just not going to work as intended all right, now that we've taken a look at everything, let's get some cars behind me and get this bad boy running. And there you have it guys. So my final verdict on this set is for a first attempt for an engine and for a set by Menards, they didn't do that bad. I think they did pretty good. Um, now, is it the best set out there? No, it is not. But is it good for what it is? Yes.
a hundred percent. Um, for two hundred and fifty dollars, you get a decent engine and a nice caboose. Um, you get a remote and a loop of track, and yeah, honestly, this has more features than what you would expect it to have for two hundred and fifty dollars. You get sound, directional lighting, road na road number specific dialogue, which uh in o gauge you only really see that online on legacy and on, not even on legacy engines on vision line engines so yeah i think for our first attempt this is really good um honestly i would really like to see menards make more sets and more engines in the future um i would like to see this set be made in more road names than just santa fe and union pacific i'd like to see one for the pennsylvania the new york central Penn Central and a bunch of other road names. And I'd like to see more engines. Um I think it would be really cool for Menards to do a steam locomotive. Um what they would do for their first one, I don't know. But I would I would assume it's probably gonna be something small. Maybe something like a I don't know, an 060 maybe or a 242, maybe. I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. But uh, with that, that's going to be all for today, guys. I hope you guys like this video. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment down below. And share with your friends and family. And with that, this is going to be Penn Center 8505. Out.